Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Today I'm at Arash Motorcars where I'm joined by Arash himself. Hello. We're taking a look at his latest car, the AF8, that you can see behind me. I just thought we'd uh, have a look at it in a little bit more detail, really. Sure. Um, talk maybe a little bit about the front, have a look at why the car is designed how it is. So I, I noticed the lights immediately. I like the look of those. Yeah, they're um, pretty much bespoke. It's the first thing that you see on the car. It's the eyes of the car. So we wanted to make as many unique features in the car that weren't carry over from another car. And these beautiful um, yeah. machined aluminium parts with the LEDs and these ones the orange and these are the uh, daylight running lights and then you've got a Xenon unit with, uh, with the cover that goes over it to do dip and main and this is all again from Isoclima. Uh, all the glass around the car is from Isoclima which is an amazing glass company in Italy that do yeah. Le Mans cars and the front glass is from Pilkington so it's got a wire through it which we're really lucky to be able to get because Pilkington supply these um, these wire demist functions, which is great for a company like us, because demist is really tough, tough to get right. And then it's got this spine here. Yep. Tim, that does um, gives it that predatorial Very neat. feel. Yeah. I see that straight away. And I'm just experimenting with this line because um, when you're on track, you want to have some kind of um, pointing um, indicator. So we've got obviously these bits here. Everyone goes on about um, yes, the, yeah, yeah. For your apex point, this um, we're experimenting with that, and then this again, this side. Uh, yeah. But the, the big feature of the car is it's very short over. Yeah, I notice immediately that the front vent comes. Well, this is barely at all in front of the wheels. Yeah, it's literally from there to there. Is um, it was all about physics. We wanted to make the car as compact and all the bits and pieces in the centre of the car. So the fuel tanks are on either side of the engine. Um, so it doesn't matter if they're full or or a half full, there'd always be central gravity in the middle of the car, and then the engine's really close to the drive. Well, let's swing around and have a look at the engine. Yeah. Seven litre V8. Okay, so you've seen the car in a dyno producing yep. 563 brake horsepower, which is Indeed. great. It was 13 brake horsepower more than we announced at the beginning of the year. Um, and everything on the car is, um, as, again, as low as possible. So you've got dry sumping with this thing here, which is holding all your oil. Um, and an oil cooler on either s on that side as well. Mm -hmm. So the oil cooler is cooling the engine oil, as, as, it, as it says, but um, it's also cooling, the second cooler underneath is cooling the gearbox oil as well, which we didn't really need, but we've added it on as, um, as a belt and braces thing. So we're always about trying to reduce risk of problems. So it's heat is our biggest enemy. Yeah. So we've got the meshing is. here, uh, louvers here for above, um, the tip of the exhaust and then behind the car we've got some um, two fans which are being installed and uh, an air vent across the rear end of the, the, the rear clam. And you were saying earlier on why do you have a one piece clam at the front, one piece clam at yep. the front, uh, rear, it's all to do with definition of quality for us so shut gaps are always a, a definition of quality so we're trying to remove any shut gaps and complexity of assembly and also it's easier for us to manufacture in carbon fibre these parts because oh, they're all there's fabrics. No, there's no shortage of carbon fibre back here. No, no well, uh, it's, it's a very, of the car. It's a very, a very um, good looking engine bay. I like the logo placement and obviously the massive wheel arch covers. Sure. So, <laughs> uh, Michelin are supplying these amazing 345. These are on Pilot Sports, but we've moved to Cup 2 now. So we're developing with Michelin the, the Cup 2 tyres um, at 345 width yep. and um, they seem to be performing very well, nice and grippy, real stiff hard walls, a great cornering and uh, the consistent quality and I've always supported Michelin so it's a, a nice relationship going on there and we just continue with our development with them. Uh, and then yeah, you've seen the engine brace, that's structural, uh, so it's made of carbon and row cell and you've got the structural beams that go across the, to the chassis. So we've got a hybrid chassis, it's, um, it's predominantly made of tubular steel uh, tube's always going to be stronger than box. It's very beautiful and it's beautifully curved and CNC bent. And in the middle of the car, we've got a carbon structure of uh, honeycomb, aluminium, honeycomb, and carbon sandwich panels that are bonded in. And then you've got a middle section in carbon floors and secondary floors in carbon again. So we're using carbon for its real purpose, which is stiffness and lightness, and also ability to make complex shapes, which is great for us because we can't make things out of aluminium very easily. We can't make things out of um, molded plastics or molded ABS, it just doesn't work with the, the numbers of cars we're going to make in the year. So even a, a complex shape like this, which is doing an air exit point, um, mounting fuse boxes, brackets, air boxes, 
uh, louvers inside, it makes more sense for us to make out of carbon and we can get the panel thickness to about two to three millimetres and uh, it allows us for weight reduction as well. So we've got stiffness and lightness with the carbon plus we've got ballistic protection with this aluminium, sorry, the uh, aramid which is a Kevlar carbon mix. So stone chips are reduced yeah. problems. Uh, harshness of the road is always our biggest worry. There is some glass in the beer. Yeah, well, co nice. cosmetically, it's quite nice having the sort of the split center, yeah. center section. I put the butterfly. The butterfly, indeed. Yeah, butterfly uh, engine cover. Yeah, and you can see it here. If I bring it down. Pop it down. So you can see how it's different. I like it. The difference good. It's different, so you can see the engine when it's stationary, which is always great, and the lights turn on and, and fire in into the engine bay to give it that sort of sense of occasion. Yep. But it's also purposeful with, it, with, with this heat management and. I do like these meshes, they kind of look, dare I say it, a bit, um, a bit fashion-y, you know, sort of fashion <laughs> item. They've got, it looks like material, almost like a material mesh, which is quite, quite unusual. Serving a purpose. They're serving a purpose. Yeah. We've just been really cautious with heat because of AF10. We had lots of heat management um, development with that. And I do like the fact that this goes, goes up like Hydraulics, so. yeah. So you press the button that lifts up by itself. It's quite Very nice neat. Touch. Yeah, and then just at the uh, back down here, it's just an exhaust system and gearbox. Yeah, ex uh, gearbox Graziano, we've been working with them for years now, and they produce a very, very reliable, strong gearbox. And it's in manual configuration at the moment. We just prefer manual. Everything's lighter. Believe me, people watching this, they like that. They like manual gearboxes. No, it's <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a driver's car and it's very Absolutely. pure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the exhaust is titanium and ceramic coated, so again it's weight reduction um, and it lends itself to the type of uh, processes that we make cars as being quite handmade. So if we're doing something handmade, because that's the way we've got to do things to make 10 cars a year, 20 cars a year, then we might as well do it with mm -hmm. celebration. And if we want to do something at low volume, we might as well treat it with a, a, a coating that is akin to Formula One. Uh, less covering panels and left, less closing f um, material, so we use just a spray on plasmas material. And again, that's what the um, F1 guy is using. Can we just take a very quick look at the inside. Sure. Uh, again, very driver focus. So it's a push button open. Okay. Very driver focus. Let's pull this out there. Let's have a quick look. Here, work going on in the background, but. Uh, yeah, Very neat quilting, nice with the contrast stitching in here. Yeah, and you can see the roof panels as well. They've been um, yep. bolted on for this one. We, didn't, we don't like things flapping around. Uh, and the steering wheel is a blend of carbon and, and leather and the embossing going on. We went for a very analogue style dial system as well, um, which yeah. allows instant reading of data without complicated um, digital numbers not really making sense and uh, the controls are very 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 much um, easy to find close to the steering wheel uh, they're all bespoke buttons they're not ideally carry over parts and even the steering wheel the handbrake and the gear knob are all bespoke made for us pedal set AP racing plus a full massive pedal so it's, it, it really is a driver focused environment there's less faff than yeah, we predicted. Uh, from uh, from my, my point of view, the, um, the tech side of things, I'm rather into my tech side of things. You've got your you've got your whole nav set up. Yeah, iPhone, that's Bluetooth, that's sorry, there. iPod stuff. Yeah, that's it. So in here you've got a... Okay, yeah. All the essential it. stuff. Yeah, it's good, to, good. To travel long distance for me is... It's uh, air conditioning, sound deadening enough so you don't go insane, and then your iPod, sat nav, um, trip computer bits and pieces, uh, it's got a reversing camera, uh, it's just got the basic essentials, plus it's got a boot which is, we've left the boot out for dyno testing, but it's enough space. Yeah. The, yeah, the so boot plunks in the there. In. You can see how it's so tightly packaged with the radiators, yep. ducts, batteries right at the front, it's an easy access of battery, it's got a hatch in, in the boot over there. Um, and it's quilt, quilt lined as, again, even the boot's carbon. You can see under here all this is visible carbon fibre to show how we're making things yeah. with, with pride. And these are quite neat, these little, little tiny hinges and gas ramps to mm -hmm. take all the, 
the force and weight of this. Yeah. Um, well, <coughs> while we're around here, we should just have a look at the have a look at the rear of the car. Sure. Yeah. Um, off from the dyno testing, of course. So we've got uh, this one-piece machined bezel system with uh, with, an, with a Heller system lighting there, uh, and these glow. These glow. There's LEDs behind here, and they glow and reflect backwards there. The, uh, the carbon wings missing at the moment. Well, there's some wings here. It's just yeah. tucked around here. Just come on. Quick look. Lightweight. So even if I like that, it's got a bit of squish in it as well. So we're trying to work out what it does aerodynamically in our testing program. It's quite light. So it's all got glued together. So even these things are carbon. They're glued on the structural bond. Um, and it's nice to have this sort of two-tone black carbon and. Triple yep. tone with the yellow <laughs> as well. Yeah, carry the colour of the car through. Again, we're so into weight, even pieces like glass. Uh, they're, they're pretty lightweight. We try and cut out as much as we don't, much of the glass we don't need. So that's just the bare yep. minimum requirement. This comes from Isoclima again with all our uh, E numbers on there and certification that it's passed. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Well, I think. We should go on a quick look at other stuff we've got going on in here. Yeah, the next cool. bay, we've got the um, the AF10. Yeah, AF10 is just having its um, just its big service, so it's just getting ready to go in the showroom. I'm sure we'll be driving around soon again. But again, it's this beautiful carbon chassis, which is made of 12 pieces, all bonded together. That was patented. Um, again, every body panel and moulding is made out of. This lovely black stuff. Uh, the front windscreen is simply amazing. The way it's curved, mm -hmm. again by Alpha Klima. It's like a, a jet fighter jet. Yes. You don't, you don't appreciate it until you're actually s seeing it in, in the flesh. And this amazing front wing as well. You sit down underneath there. And uh, yeah, we're not. We're a bit disappointed we couldn't carry this over to AF8, but. Um, it will always lose the front end space. Yeah, front end space and visibility is a bit, a bit OTT for a super sports car. Well, this is be a, like a hyper mega car, but it's this amazing shape, shape the way it dips down like a fighter jet. It's like, uh, unbelievable. And yeah, these, so. these lights are so huge. <laughs> Look at that. Mad. Neat though. Very yeah. neat. Carbon fibre inside. Yeah, that was, again, we did all this in house carbon fibre lights, uh, machine aluminium bezels, a Hello unit there, and a daylight running lamp. We've got another daylight running lamp chip there and some LEDs, but that's a carryover part, so. Yeah. So, no, I, I like that there's a lot of space in here. There's more. Ready, ready to get things in the factory, is yeah. ready to get things going. We've got the, the bays there's set up. Three bays, um, so we can make three cars a month. That's the way we're planning things. And if it goes that way, it goes that way. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. We've got enough space around us to store all our bodies and to my a couple of uh, a couple of other nice yeah. toys. My cars sat just, in here. They just hang Carrera GT the time right here. Uh, this, a, this is a GTS that's just being again stored, ready for uh, the showroom. So a GT, GTS being stored here. Uh, this, so this was the press car. Amazing car. Wait, the so, press car, sorry. This was yeah. the original press car that we had, and it's just going through. And so, you know, oh yeah, well, well, don't worry. I mean, cars in restoration. Yeah, it unfortunately got completely um, burnt at the old site, so it's just being fully restored. It's going to see happy days again, though. It's going to see some happy days, and this again, this is the second GPS. And it's just been restored. So this was um, made for Lawrence Caparossi, but he just kept it here. He comes over and sees us every now and again. Should um, we just take a really quick peek in the other side? Sure, yeah. So, so in here we're doing all our composite work, absolutely everything um, to do with air fates is made from 109 mouldings. Some of them are carbon mould, some of them are um, blue, blue chemi block system, some of them are wood based system. And so here's a, an engine cover, so the butterfly engine cover you saw that's just being ready. And yep. First stage. So this is called debulk, where you put one layer of carbon down, uh, leave it there for a, a time period, and then we take the bag off, and then we put the balanced layer of five more um, layers of carbon and, and, a, and a filler system. So it's carbon reinforced plastic. So it's got layers of plastic in the middle and carbon on either side. It keeps the weight and the, and the cost down to something 
reasonable. And you can see some of the parts that have just been made. That's the tunnel. Weighs basically, basically nothing. <laughs> yeah, again, you know, that would be made out of steel normally or lots of layers of plastic. And it's doing two jobs. Um, the force pipes run through here. But I don't know if you can see, there's some scribe lines there. Mm -hmm. That's where the gear change sits on top. So it has okay. to be quite strong. So yeah. it's five times stronger than steel, but half its weight per um, millimeter thickness, which is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. It's all the uh, bits and bobs that's a pieces together here. That's quite cute. That's the door handle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you won't see any of that. They'll be covered in a, a flocking material. But it's, again, all these little bits matter. That yeah, save, every, save a little bit of weight everywhere you can. Exactly, yeah. In the uh, oven. So we're doing everything that's non-structural in the oven, which is a large portion of the car. So some of the, sh the chassis components aren't done in here. Uh, and this has been around with me for the last 15 years. This oven follows me yep. wherever I go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it can do 10 pieces at a time. It's a nice shiny box, but it does 200 yeah. degrees all day long with computer control. It's nice to see it again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I think it's fascinating that it's so neat, no, so neatly um, set up in here. Yeah, I recognize that from the rear of the um, engine yeah. deck lid. That's it. So that'll, that'll be laid up again. Um, air boxes. Uh, that's the cup holders. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there are 100, 109 molds here. Yes. For all air sorts boxes. of different parts. Yeah, and these are the materials used for bagging. It's all a bit of a strange art when you find out how carbon fibres are made, this yeah. will be quite um, familiar. This one is the front, um, you know I was telling you about the brake cooling, so that's the mould to show you the brake cooling with a pipe that goes to the, okay, the yeah. brake itself, so that's the front lower splitter. Yep. But you can't really tell from no, there. No, you can't tell at all from no. the other side. <laughs> no, it's impossible to detect until you... Yeah. Uh, these are closing panels over yeah. here, so these are the large sheets that cover the sides of the chassis for the rears. So that's where your drive shaft goes through, wishbone component um, mm -hmm. mount. That, these are little cutouts you see in the forehand. And then a carbon tool would be like this roof tool over here, next to a whole bunch of fluids and things. So that's a, that's a true carbon tool that we use to, to make the roof the um, windscreen, and that's made of 10 layers of carbon, and that can cure at 200 degrees and make about 300 parts from this. Uh, okay. But it gives us an ability to make visual carbon fiber panels. It's just, that's, again, a nice, nice touch to have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we use all the mold for AF10. It's a bit of a tragedy. We made all this tooling for AF10, but we only made one car. But that's the way we do things, to try and do things as, as properly as possible. So eventually yeah, well, in a year's time you'll see production happening and there'll be chassis on, on trolleys over here, there won't be my cars here, <laughs> uh, and then uh, they'll move into each of these bays to be filled up with all the componentry. So we don't have a production line, as much as I'd love to have a production line, it doesn't work for this type of company. Yeah, um, so it, uh, it makes sense to just do a bay system, almost like a Formula One car or uh, a Le Mans car. So the, uh, the last car to look at. This is my favourite car. So this is the Fabu GT, but we did call it AF10 LM for Goodwood a little while back. And so this was all made by my hands. So I hand, hand sanded it from a scale model and um, put the engine in. It's got an Audi based V6 twin turbo unit. It's so 620 horsepower and it weighs 800 kilos. It's got this ridiculously huge rear wing, <laughs> which I really wanted when I was, I was 23 years old. I wanted this sort of crazy Le Mans car. So was, when did you make this? This was 1999 I started and I released in 2002. Okay. So I did the sketches in 1999 and then, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's all racing car for yeah. the road. It did, <laughs> it did the Gumball Rally twice and it's in their, um, in their annual. So yeah. it, was, it, was, it was good fun doing it. Not the uh, easiest car to get in and out of, though, no. I imagine. I used to be a lot thinner. <laughs> Yeah, it would be a lot thinner. It would be quite an uh, interesting... Six foot uh, one is your max for this car. With the test driver he was using it at Goodwood, James Wood, he was six foot one. and I just like the whole dihedral door. Yeah, well, I can see you, you've carried that through to AF10, so... 
Yeah, I was fascinated with that. I just thought, God, that's such a different way of putting a door on a car. But when I was explained by the, the Le Mans guy, designer who did all these sort of Le Mans cars for Porsche, was saying, yeah, it actually helps keep the door down at high speed. But you know, these things like napper ducts, they're so cool, look at that. Oh. <laughs> And these louvers, like fish. Well, gills. I can imagine it's the amount of time that goes into planning every single little bit. Yeah, it's just everything was such an effort to get it right. And, and I was. But yeah, sat so satisfying, young. I imagine. Yeah, it was. Seeing really things, especially seeing things grow as you look through it's the bit, factory. It's lovely coming in here. It's a nice place to work. We can go upstairs to the studio as well. Follow me. You see how we. A quick look upstairs. Yeah. So here's kind of the showroom. So you, you cl clients, customers come down and visit me here and. It's nice to show off the new model or new car. And then just up here we've got um, a viewing gallery, which is quite nice again. There's canteen. Food is always useful. <laughs> a little place to watch the cars. And what a view. And you've got this view of how assembly goes on. So again, as we were saying earlier on, in a year's time you will see three bays and then you'll have um, Chassis on trolleys uh, with bodywork pre-fitted, and then I'll just zoom into each of those. Yeah, into those bays. And up here is a great environment for the stylist to work. Quiet, uncluttered meeting room. No mess. Just how I like it. <laughs> and then you've got stations for the stylists. So we've got two, three stylists joining us in next month. Who'll be working on the next fantasy cars? I, I like to call them. Yeah. Um, there won't be production cars. Uh, these are the original sketches. Looking at these. So the original AF8 sketch, um, outline sketch. It's all done by Buya Maremi, um, who was working with me in 2010. Toby Miller and Buya Maremi did the exterior styling, and then um, Jared and Rob, who, Rob who works with me now, he's our lead stylist. He did the, they did the interior. So it was four stylists for AF8. Buya and Toby did the scale model for AF8, which is so cool to have. So that's how it was planned to look. It was supposed to have an AF10 front wing thing, but we couldn't get the boot space. It's got the Z and S. I'm really proud of that. That was a Yeah, nice we didn't feature. talk about that so much on the car downstairs, but mm -hmm. it's very neat. Yeah. It's, um, it fits more when you put the rear, when the rear's sure. on the car. Well, when you come back and when it's yeah, put together. Yeah, when we see some more. You get to see it more. And the rear lights were supposed to be like a face and eyes. And we weren't too sure how to do the engine cover because we were, we were just ending up with the car looking like too many other yep. historical cars. So that's Set your own identity. Exactly. So then we, so then that's a good way of putting it. Um, and in here is typical engineering workstations, 3D printing, so this is quite nice. We can do like the lights of the car, have a pre pre-done on the 3D printer. Um, Test everything out. Brackets. These bits of kit are These. very cool. The way you can just sort of <laughs> make, make make something, test it out. Some switches. Quick and easy plastic. Well not necessarily quick, they take some time. Seat runner, but the miniature version. <laughs> front bonnet, front front boot. So that was the yeah. boots to show the pattern maker that we wanted these edges in them. <laughs> so we gave them that. Went, yeah, can you do that make for this. us? <laughs> Four hinges. But it's fantastic that you can do that. You don't have to go and make the full on. Yeah, because it takes too long. Kit. That can be done in 40 minutes. Rather yeah. than a machine shop, it takes three days. And then it's all done yeah. on this maker bot. Maker bots have just been sold for some squealing amount of money. Well, 3D printing is becoming all the rage, isn't it? it? Is. Very quickly. And that's my office. So I. You can see in here that this is the last, if we ever made a cage room for a <laughs> you know, sort of radical style car. That's, that's our interpretation. That was done by Rob, our lead stylist. There's a nice nice little model that I put on my office. It's fun to have these, the models of the cars lying around. Yeah. This is a new generation of brake. Yeah. So this is made by one of our suppliers. It's a lightweight aluminium casting. It's machine. He's putting our name in there. Mm -hmm. So that's the new name logo. Yeah. So we've evolved the badge and, sh and a name in the last 15 years, which is quite a nice touch for them to do. Uh, it's our throttle pedal that we've been talking about today. It's always been a, so video have produced this and fly-by-wire is always a bit of a tricky thing to get right. So the dyno work today you've seen has been a real result. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite delighted that that's working out very well. well.
Total pedal doing what it should, performance being quite impressive. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's certainly it's all going quite well. Yeah. So it's a nice environment for us to work in. Okay. Oh, it's a fantastic view. It's a good view to see what. So I can Seeing see. Seeing the AF8s coming along here will be uh, yeah, it's quite special. Yeah, yeah, it's quite uh, nice it's just... to, to just watch the, the years develop from here. Because used to, this used to be literally empty. We just have the th three race bays. For the first two years, all we did was work in the studio and work on computers, just doing all the development for F8. And now this is the final year, so we're doing execution of design, um, testing. So there's two test cars. The second one's being built now, as you saw the private parts, private parts being made. And then we're doing promotion and customer cars. So by the end of the year, we'll probably have three customer cars being realistic. Looks sounds and looks exciting to me. So thank you very much for the quick tour around no and uh, looking forward to some more videos yeah, and some more excitement. So, with us. Yeah, thank Thanks you very much. Over, Tim. That's Thanks. my pleasure. Guys, make sure you subscribe because there's going to be a load more stuff with the AF8 as well on the Shmi 150 channel. Hope you've enjoyed a quick look around with Arash. Thanks very much to him for letting me come along. That's it for right now. I'll catch up with you very soon. Cheers.